have the, well, I have some announcements anyway, so we can start with that. So good morning. Good morning. morning. So you might wonder why it is that I look like this, or you might have just come to accept it since we've been journeying <laughs> together since January. Um, today is all about humor and laughter. Uh, so I just thought I would put a little makeup on for you, do something a little fun with my hair. And I might be a little excited because this is my last Sunday before holidays. Yeah! <laughs> no offense, I love you all, but it's time for a break. Um, so I just wanted to ask you to look over here at the beautiful flowers. So the flowers are were placed here this morning by, by Wilma Daly in loving memory of her husband Keith on the first anniversary of his passing, July 29th, 2023. And happy 80th birthday to Jerry. So the Asling family is inviting everyone to come here to celebrate his birthday Saturday, August 12th um, from 1 till 4. Just kind of a come and go as you please. And we have uh, some celebrations, which is always nice, right? Aside from the break in the disgusting humidity, yay, we, uh, uh, I have permission to share from the Jensen family. So Ashley has an appointment for her MRI on Tuesday, August 1st. And their GoFundMe, the goal that they had, has been met and far surpassed. So, the Jensen family would like to express their deep gratitude for all of the love and the support that our church family has given and continues to give them during this time. And we pray for safe travels to and from the appointment, as well as results in a plan of action for Ashley. So I think we need another round of applause for that because that's answer prayer for sure. Um, and contrary, to, I mean, I really appreciate this, you know, to build a house for us. But we actually have an apartment. Woo! So a little God moment for you. So I had contacted Joanne Switzer on this past Sunday just to double check with her. Nope, she was totally booked. Fine. She calls me on Tuesday. Cancellation from July 30th to August 26th. Woo! So it's, uh, I mean, we're cozy, but we're not complaining. So it's a, it's only a one bedroom, but it has a um, queen size bed in the bedroom and then like a double pull out couch. And we grabbed an air mattress as well from our house. So look at us, we have housing and we're so excited. So yay, great way to start our holidays. Um, and I'm on holidays as of this coming Friday, August 4th. Um, I'll be in the office this week because I have been moving this past week. So thank you so much everyone for grace and understanding I've been in and out, but yeah, it's been a lot. All right, here we go. So as we are gathered here this morning, we recognize that we are on the traditional territory of the Odawa, Mississauga, and Anishinaabewaki First Nations and the Métis people, and that we are all people of Treaty 45 and a half. May we continue to work to be in right relations with our indigenous neighbors and speak up and speak out against systemic racism and colonialism. So to gather in today, I have a couple of, uh, we'll have a campy song for you. Then we got, we got a lot of puns in the service today. You're welcome, Paul. Um, yeah, it's just, it's gonna be a great lighthearted service. So this is a repeat after me song and you will say, this is a repeat after me song. So this I is a repeat say, after me song. This is a repeat after me song. <laughs> this, this is a repeat after, after me song. song. <laughs> Let's try it. One more time without the cheek from the front here. This is a repeat after me song. This is a repeat after me song. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus, Jesus loves me, me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him be loved. Little ones to him be loved. They are weak, but he is strong. They are weak, but he is strong. Ah! Jesus ah! loves me. Ah! Jesus loves me. Ah, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. For the Bible tells me so. For the Bible tells me so. Red and yellow, black and white. Red and yellow, black and white. Jesus thinks you're dynamite. Red and yellow, black and green. Red and yellow, black and green. Jesus thinks you're peach king. Jesus thinks you're peach king. Jesus 
Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Walk with Jesus in the light. Walk with Jesus in the night. Walk with Jesus in the day. Walk with Jesus all the way. Walk with Jesus all the way. Say, ah, Jesus loves me. Ah, Jesus loves me. Ooh, yeah, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. For the Bible tells me so. Excellent. Can you hear me okay? I know I'm not like right up here, but is it okay in the back? Hecklers in the back? Excellent. <laughs> All right. A couple of poems for you before we get into our next song so that you can kind of catch your breath a little bit. A book just fell on my head. I only have my shelf to blame. Oh. oh, that's right. Did you hear the joke about the little mountain? It's Hill Arius. Oh. oh. Where do rats go when they have a cavity? Can I make a pun after this? The rodentist. Oh. oh. Two more, I promise. Well, for now. I'm great friends with 25 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. Boo! Oh. <laughs> Easy haters in the back. All right, number five. If you need help building an ark, I know a guy. Oh. This is a repeat after me song. This is a repeat after me song. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a great big there was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. Singing oh way oh. Singing oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh. Way oh 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 way oh. The moose's name was Fred. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. He liked to drink his juice in bed. The moose's name was Fred. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. He liked to drink his juice in bed. Singing oh way oh, singing oh way oh, way oh 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 way oh. He drank his juice with care. He drank his juice with care. But he spilled some in his hair. But he spilled some in his hair. He drank his juice with care. He drank his juice with care. But he spilled some in his hair. But he spilled some in his hair. Singing oh way oh. Singing oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Now there's a sticky moose. Now there's a sticky moose. All covered in juice. All covered in juice. Now there's a sticky moose. Singing oh way oh. Singing oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Now there's a sticky moose. All covered in juice. And he's on the loose. And, and he's on, on the loose. loose. Excellent. All right. Awesome. So our gathering song today, so all the songs that you're going to hear are from this Christian camp that's down near where I grew up, Pierce Williams Christian Center. Um, and this song they wrote, it's called Together. So the counselors got together and they wrote the song, and this was for their, I think, 2022 um, camping season. So I'm going to play it. I know that you won't understand it, but can you spell, or you won't know it, but can you spell the word together? Okay, so we're gonna spell it together. Ready, here we go. T-O-G-E-T-H-E-R. The teacher in me is very proud of each one of you right now. <laughs> so the chorus goes, I gotta be together, you gotta be together. So when I point, they'll go T, the team that we're together, O, G, E, and then we sing the chorus, okay? It'll, it'll catch on, I promise. So I gotta be together, you gotta be together. Ready? I gotta be. I gotta, I gotta be, be together. together. 
you gotta be together. We gotta be together. Let's all be together. We gotta be together. You gotta be together. We gotta be together. Let's all come together. Oh. G. E. You gotta be together. We gotta be together. Let's all be together. We gotta be together. You gotta be together. We gotta be together. So let's all be together. was a young Greek man named Eucatus, who grew so bored from Paul's sermon that he fell asleep and then fell through an open window. People rushed outside where they found Eucatus dead on the ground. They carried him back up to the room, probably embarrassed by the whole situation. Paul brought the kid back to life like nothing had ever happened, and then he proceeded to preach some more. And that, my friends, is the story of why all church sanctuaries are on the ground floor. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, holy source of laughter, thank you for giving us the gift of laughter. For all things harmlessly quaint, incongruous, and unexpectedly absurd. For pomposity that falls on its face. For children chuckling over a riddle. For lovers enjoying each other's quirks of character for cartoonists sending up political arrogance, for explorers cracking jokes in the face of danger, for the terminally ill who laugh at their nurses, for the saints who throw laughter into the jaws of evil, for Jesus and his quirky sayings, the camel attempting to squeeze through the eye of a needle, the man with a plank in his eye who tries to shift a speck from his neighbor's eye, the woman who bakes bread for her family 100 kilos of it, the man, perhaps having a senior's moment, who lights a lamp, only to put it under a bed. The dead who want to bury the dead. The woman who, on finding one last coin, throws a party. For the New Testament faith that can laugh because it knows nothing can cut us off from the love of Christ, neither a host of troubles nor deep distress, neither persecution nor starvation, neither nakedness, peril, nor sword, not anything in life or in death will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. O holy source of laughter, thank you for giving us the gift and for the faith and hope that allows us to employ it to the full. We laugh because you first laughed on our behalf. Thanks a million. We gather here in the name of your son Jesus who taught us these words to say together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 
uh, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Joke time again. Why did the clock get shushed in the library? It was talking too loud. Good one. Thank you. What did the cupcake say to the frosting? I'd be muffin without you. Oh. What does a skunk judge say? Odor in the court. Oh, Fantastic. I love all of them. So as we are gathered here this morning and talking about laughter and how it brings joy, I'm going to get into a little bit later on. Laughter is a spiritual practice. But I wanted to share this story that I came across called the Red Scooter Story. And I don't know about you, but I find when I look at life through the lens of gratitude that I'm able to better access things like joy and laughter. And I'm able to give people the benefit of the doubt a little bit more. I'm able to tap into a little more grace and extend that to people. It also allows me the opportunity to see all of the saints that are around me and learn from each and every one of you that are here and each and every one of you and each and every person that I encounter in this journey of life. So in this story, you're going to hear about a gentleman and his red scooter. And I just want you to pay particular attention to the gentleman's outlook on life and the surprise that happens for him in this story. The Red Scooter Story. The shiny red mobility scooter was the first thing to grab our attention. The second was the generous smile of the driver as he glided slowly into the queue for the restaurant. Judith exclaimed, now that's a well-polished, glistening red scooter. I've seen, I've never seen one so beautiful. Don't you love it, said the man, whose name was Don. I can't walk anymore, I can't drive anymore, but I finally have my childhood dream. I'm in my 80s and I finally have a red scooter. He glowed with gusto, glistened with gratitude. Susie, Don's wife, came into the line, and then we were pleasingly seated together, two couples who had never met, but shared life stories and struggles. At one point in the conversation, I turned to Don and said, I want you to know that from the first moment we met this evening, I was grateful and pleased. I think you are a new mentor for me. I believe the biggest spiritual challenge for those of us who are aging is how we cope with losses. They keep coming faster and hitting more deeply. If it is not some part of our body failing, it is that someone dear to us is lost by death or by distance. We begin to lose the activities that gave our lives richness. All the losses we encounter are a challenge. From the instant you came up to us, you communicated your losses and, you can, and your continued vitality, guts, resilience, hope, good humor, and lust for life. Your witness, gratitude, and joy for that, I am very grateful. Don appeared a little stunned, then he smiled and said a quiet, thank you. I have a new friend, a new mentor. He drives a red scooter. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but stories like that fill me up inside. And when I am filled up, that I'm able to let what is filled up inside of me overflow to those around us. And I know that we've done this song before, Fill My Cup, where we go, fill my cup, up, let it overflow, fill my cup, up, let it overflow, fill my cup, up, let it overflow, let it overflow with love. Excellent. So we're going to sing this song now, so film like that. Are you ready to fill your cup? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Fill my cup. Let it go. 
right, so in preparation for today, I came across this little uh, reflection about divine humor, how laughter benefits us spiritually. <laughs> it was 45 minutes to my cousin's wedding reception in Nashville, Tennessee, and my mom was driving. I had my cousin's vanilla frosted two-tier wedding cake on my lap. My mom made a sharp left turn, and the box went flying. The cake was smashed against the dashboard. Frosting was smeared all over the inside of the rental car. I glared at my mom, ready to let her have it. Then I burst out laughing. Not just a few giggles, more like gut-busting laughter. Pretty soon, my mom was laughing too. Tears streamed down our cheeks, and we couldn't have stopped if we tried. We made it to the reception and even managed to make the cake look somewhat presentable. Weeks later, though, I was still scratching my head over the incident. Why on earth had I laughed? The moment had been free, cathartic, almost spiritual. As if the laughter was coming from deep within my soul. Could it be that my laughter wasn't just a senseless reaction to a potential disaster, but rather some sort of gift? from God. Curious, I brought my questions to Father James Martin, a Catholic priest and best-selling author of My Life with the Saints. In 2011, Father Martin wrote a book called Between Heaven and Mirth, Why Joy, Humor, and Laughter Are at the Heart of the Spiritual Life. Father Martin was dismayed that so many of the Christians he met assumed faith was strictly a solemn matter. Laughter is actually a tenet of faith, Father Martin told me. The end point of the Christian life is joy, he said. Yet we don't privilege joy as much as we do suffering. I thought that was kind of interesting. I'll just say it one more time. Yet we don't privilege joy as much as we do suffering. There is plenty of humor to be found in the Bible. When Nathaniel in the Gospel of John hears about Jesus, he remarks, can anything good come from Nazareth? According to Father Martin, Nathaniel is, th is throwing shade at Nazareth, a joke lost on many readers. A large part of the Gospels was written to explain the Passion narrative, so we tend to focus on those stories over the ones in which Jesus was more joyful. Father Martin says, but the Passion was only one week of Jesus' life, an important week, but still only one week. Let's not forget his first miracle was to turn wine, water into wine at a wedding celebration. Amen. That doesn't mean taking Jesus' miracle or his message lightly. But if you think of Jesus as always serious, then your ability to relate to him as a person of joy is limited. Father Martin says, If even Jesus knew the importance of laughter, does that mean that God actually wants us to laugh more? Yes, says Susan Sparks, author of Laugh Your Way to Grace, Reclaiming the Spiritual Power of Human. Humor, humor or human, whatever. <laughs> Sparks is a former trial lawyer turned minister and stand-up comedian. She says laughter is uniquely human. We are the only creatures that really laugh, she says. And since we're made in the image of the divine, that must mean God laughs too. Ergo, laughter is innately spiritual. There's something fundamentally holy about it, Spark says. If you can laugh at yourself, you can forgive yourself. If you can forgive yourself, you can forgive others too. Laughter can even heal. Sparks recalls her battle with breast cancer 10 years ago. She credits laughing with speeding up the recovery process. Being able to laugh in a place of pain was the most powerful thing I could do to take my mind, to take my life back, she said. I'm not sure how I was able to laugh in the middle of all of that, but it was something I tapped into with my, within myself and it helped me survive. Indeed, the health benefits of humor are well documented. Norman Cousins, author of The Groundbreaking Anatomy of an Illness as Perceived by the Patient, Reflections on Healing and Regeneration was one of the first to popularize the idea of laughter as medicine in 1979. Cousins had overcome a painful battle with connective tissue disorder by prescribing himself laughter and made the joyous discovery that 10 minutes of genuine belly laughter had an anesthetic effect and would give me at least two hours of pain-free sleep. 
Still, more evidence of laughter's deep-rooted benefits is anecdotal. So take Deborah Hart, a nurse, a lay minister, and member of the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. In 1997, Deborah found herself alone in a church parking lot, contemplating suicide. She was overwhelmed with grief after the death of a close friend. In the midst of her pain, something remarkable happened. As I was thinking about ending my life, a joke popped into my head. It was a joke she'd heard at church about a man sitting on top of his roof during a flood. A group in a rowboat comes by and offers to help him, but the man replies, God's going to save me. A motorboat arrives, followed by a helicopter. The man's response is the same. Finally, the waters rise and the man drowns. When he gets to heaven, he asks God, why didn't you save me? God replies, I sent a rowboat, a motorboat, and a helicopter. <laughs> Something inside heart clicked. Laughter bubbled out, releasing her pain and sorrow. I kept thinking that I didn't want to die and hear God say, I sent you a motorboat. Heart says with a laugh, she, she called a psychiatrist and entered counseling. In the 20 years since, Heart has made mirth-filled laughter the focus of her work. It's the kind of authentic laughter that makes your stomach ache, Hart says. Several studies suggest that this specific type of laughter can raise your good cholesterol and even lower your blood sugar. That's one reason many people have started to practice laughter therapy, which teaches them how to use laughter to release tension. If you can laugh, then you're breathing, Hart says. When you take, when you take that breath, you're reconnecting with the world and you're reconnecting with God. I thought back to my cousin's wedding cake, how I knew on some level that things would be okay as long as I could laugh. Father Martin was right. Laughter isn't just a biological reaction. It's a divine gift. Why do we laugh? Because we're created to. What do you call a duck that loves to make jokes? A wise quacker. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about the frog whose car broke down? He had to be towed. Oh. Now, keeping in the spirit of laughter, we have the song, The Fruit of the Spirit. So the fruit of the spirit, um, this is a different version because we did a version in church, but this one is from Pierce Williams. So there's some actions that we're going to practice. So the first one is the fruit of the spirit is not a coconut, and you click and knock on your head twice over. Okay, so can we try that? The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit, okay? The next one is banana. So try not to hit the person next to you. So banana, you're gonna go up like this. So the fruit of the spirit is not a banana. And then you're going to go peel. Okay, keep one hand up, just peel. Okay, so let's try that. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. Peel. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. Peel. If you want to be a banana, peel. You might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit. Okay. Now, watermelon. So you have to pretend that you're carrying a heavy watermelon and you're going to say it in the lowest possible voice. So it'll be the fruit of the Spirit is not a watermelon. Okay, so let's try it. Ready? Here we go. The fruit of the Spirit is not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit is not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, two more. Pineapple. Nope, three more, sorry. Pineapple. So take three fingers, put them on top of your head, and you're going to say, whoop. Okay, so the fruit of the spirit's not a pineapple. The fruit of the spirit's not a pineapple. If you want to be a pineapple, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit. Excellent. All right, guava, because it's just fun to say. So when you hear guava, you're just going to kind of like shimmy in your chair. Okay. So the fruit of the spirit's not a guava, and you got to say it like guava. Okay. The fruit of the spirit's not a guava. If you want to be a guava, might as well hear it. Can't be the fruit of the spirit. 
All right, last one, dragon fruit. So you're gonna show some claws and you're gonna roar, okay? So the fruit of the spirit's not a dragon fruit, roar. That was weak. The fruit of the spirit's not a dragon fruit, roar. If you want to be a dragon fruit, roar. You might as well hear it, you can't be the fruit of the spirit. Excellent. And then the fruit of the spirit part is Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you want to do the hand jive actions, you don't have to. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Here we go. Ready? <clears throat> and if you would like to stand, feel free to stand. But I'm, it's fine if you sit as well. I think you should stand. No. Yeah. I think our kids will. You stand. Come on, let's do that. So get ready for the coconut. The fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. The fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control.
of laughter and joy so we may continue to reveal your character to everyone around us as you bless these gifts today and all God's people said Amen, Amen. I invite you to join your hearts and minds for a time of prayers of the people let us pray God of holidays for rest and relaxation switching off phones and email the release from the demands of diaries and calendars the blissful luxury of solitude God, who rests with us for holiday joys, we praise you. For travel and exploration, adventuring to new places, discovering beauty and strangeness, exploring new food and ways of life. God, who travels with us for holiday joys, we praise you. For play and leisure, games on the beach or field, delighting in fun and laughter and joy sharing time with friends and family. God who plays with us for holiday joys, we praise you. For making and creating, forming shapes in clay, wood or stone, splashing color with paint or thread, words or, echo or music echoing in our soul. God who creates with us for holiday joys, we praise you. And for the silent prayers that we have deep in our hearts, which we take a moment and silently offer up to you. God, who listens to us when we pray, we praise you. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So our closing song, I don't think I've done this one with you yet. But if I have, then I'm just going to claim a sometime this moment. Um, so it's, I just want to be a sheep. So I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba. Have I done it? Or do you, yeah, perfect. Yay, look at that. Look at me go. So just a uh, recap of it before we sing it. So I just want to be a sheep. And then you go your little ears up and you go, ba, ba. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. And then you do that. It's almost like a knee slapper joke, like when Paul makes jokes sometimes. <laughs> and then I just want to be sheep, ba ba. And then it says, I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't. Want, and remember the Pharisees? They were the ones that were all like, Oh, we know the law. We know everything. We want to judge all the people. And then it says, So I don't want to be a Pharisee. And then they're like, Uh uh. I don't want to be a Pharisee. No way, because they're not fair. You see. Oh. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba. And then I don't want to be a Sadducee. And we got to be sad. So I want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Because they're so yeah. sad. And you see. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, ba. Oh, I missed one. I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I don't want to be a hypocrite. Mm -mm. I don't want to be a hypocrite. No way. Because they're not hip with it. I just want to be a sheep, ba ba. Now, quick question: Why do we want to be a sheep? Because, like, right now, if we were a sheep, although we'd be shaved down, it'd be a little hot, wouldn't it? Why do we want to be a sheep? Because they're cute. In the back. They're cute. Because they're cute. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Jesus was a shepherd. They make clothing. Because we follow Jesus. Jesus is our shepherd, right? So we are his sheep. He protects us. He takes care of us. He feeds us. Gives us water, he protects us, it's all good. So that's why we want to be a sheep, because we want to follow our good shepherd. Okay? Alright, let's try. I just want to be a sheep. 
Oh 